everyone and welcome to the Okaroots YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we're going to be making a crossbody bag that I promise you no one's going to believe you made it. I mean, that's no offense to your skill level. I'm just saying it is so stinking cute and so professional. It's, it's, I'm having a hard time believing I made this and I made it yesterday. Today, we're going to be making the crystal crossbody and this pattern comes to us from Crafts craftsfully made. <laughs> now this is the first time we have featured this pattern designer on the channel and I am obsessed with this bag. Look at this. We have, yeah, a cork quilt block on a crossbody bag with a little recessed zipper that is perfect. Every single measurement in this pattern is absolutely perfect. It all comes together snug as a bug in a rug. It is just the best. It is the best. Not only is this the pattern we're featuring today, this is also the kit for November's Oakler at Sally Tomato monthly mystery box. So you're gonna get all the material to make this right here. The only thing you're not gonna get is my bag tag because it's, it's my bag tag. But let's just walk through this bag real quick. First, we have a nice crossbody strap. Now this crossbody strap is not adjustable. If you wanna make an adjustable one, you definitely can. This is just a half inch webbing. Again, if you wanna use your own material, you definitely can. But you know me, I don't really like spending a lot of time on straps, so webbing for the win. It has two earrings on the side. The front panel has this beautiful little upper strip right here. And then we have like a, it's not quilted, but it's pieced together like a quilt block using cork. And it's just gorgeous. On the sides, we are using a gusset to put this together. We do have some rounded corners. I'm gonna tell you right now, the rounded corners are not difficult at all to sew. Again, the measurements for this are just absolutely perfect. So these corners are not tricky. The only somewhat tricky part, like on many bags like this, is going to be sewing around this top bit because it is a smaller, a smaller area. So I'm gonna say this is definitely more of an advanced beginner pattern versus a beginner beginner pattern. But if you use quilt cotton, you know, lighter weight material, it's gonna be easier. On the back, we just have a back main panel, but you could definitely use the same panel on the front as on the back if you just wanted to make two of them. On the top, we have the most gorgeous recessed zipper. I mean, I know that sounds silly to say, but this is just the most beautiful recessed zipper. It, it just fits perfectly. I love it. When we open up the bag, on one side of the lining, we have a zip pocket. And then on the other side of the lining, we have a double slip pocket with this beautiful little cork trim. Again, every single detail about this bag is just perfect. And it is not complicated. It is not challenging. If you have sewn zippers before, if you have sewn little crossbody bags before, if you've ever worked with a curve, you're going to be fine. And if you haven't done all of those things, but you've done one of them, like you've made snack bags before and you want to make a crossbody bag, I say go for it with this pattern. It is just so stinking cute. So thank you so much to Craftsfully Made for sending me this pattern and also for allowing me to use your pattern on the channel. I am so excited again to share this with you guys and I cannot wait to explore more of their patterns. Thank you also to Sally Tomato for sponsoring today's video. If you're new to the Oakler's YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, suggestions for other patterns from this pattern maker, leave them down in the comments section. As we get into the holiday season, I'm really looking for more patterns that are quick makes and great gifts. That's kind of the quick and great to give. And um, luckily we have a lot of options when it comes to that. Items like this that do not look like it was handmade because it is just so perfect, but it was handmade and it didn't take, you know, days and days and days to put it together. I, I'm just so excited about this. All right, guys, let's get started. So for this, you're gonna need two thirds a yard of main exterior fabric and a fat quarter of contrast fabric. Now I'm gonna be using cork for both of these. Cork is nice and lightweight and doesn't require any interfacing. Um, if you wanted to use vinyl, you can, you just, you're gonna have a lot of layers here. So I would suggest something more lightweight. Then you're gonna need a third a yard of lining fabric. For that, I'm using a quilt cotton. You could also use a water resistant canvas. After that, you'll need about a fat quarter of Decoville light and then a 30 yard of woven interfacing. That's pretty much just for anything that is woven material. And so for today, it's only gonna be used on lining pieces. So for the strap, I'll be using a half inch wide piece of webbing. This is about 48 inches long. Uh, 48 to 56 inches is great for a crossbody strap. Since I'm not using an adjustable slider, this is not an adjustable strap. So 48 inches is just kind of a good standard size. To go with the strap, I have two swivel hooks and then I also have two D rings. Then I have a box of rivets here. The rivets are optional, but they're really helpful with the strap and a little decorative accent in the pocket. For the end of the zipper tape, I have a little zipper end, and then I have two zipper pulls and at least 22 inches of number five zipper tape. 
All right, so we have a lot of other stuff today. The pattern uses a lot of double-sided tape. So make sure this is a double-sided tape that's not too sticky, not like a leather tape or anything like that. It has to be a nice wash away, easy to sew over tape. However, you don't have to use it as much as the pattern suggests. So I will kind of like make note throughout the tutorial if, if you don't need to use the double-sided tape, but we, we still will be using a lot of it. And then I have some washi tape to hold things in place. And then I have just a little bit of duct tape. That's more for my bag tag. Then I have a good amount of plastic clover clips. I have a screwdriver set. This is just for the zipper end. Some glue. This is Beacon 3-in-1 glue. This is also going to be used for the zipper end. For my top thread, my needle today, I'll be using a Tex 45 weight thread. And then in the bobbin, I'm using a Mara 100 weight thread. And then for my needle, I'm using a Microtex 8012. You're going to want to probably use an 8012 today. No matter the material, unless you're using really thick material, then you're going to want to use a 9014. I have a lighter to help clean up any loose threads, my bag tag, then I have my seam ripper stiletto combo, a turning tool, a few different marking tools, a chalk marking tool, air racing marking tool, and silver ink pen, just depending on the color of the material I'm using. I have my rivet press and hole punch, and then of course my one inch by six inch ruler. So for time's sake, I already have all my interfacing and my stabilizer attached. So we're just gonna go through the pattern pieces and I'll show you how they're attached. First, we have pattern piece A, which is our upper exterior band. This is gonna go on the front of the bag, on the exterior, and this is gonna go above the quilted blocks that we have on the bottom. For this one, you have a smaller cut of Decoville Light attached to it, and you're gonna have it go 5 8 inch down from the top edge of this panel and make sure it's centered. Next we have panel B, which is the back exterior panel. This also has a Decoville light cut already attached. And this is again, 5 8 of an inch down from the top edge and centered. I want to show you that pattern piece C is going to be used later after we piece together our pieced bottom. Uh, however, if you just had a piece of cork or material and you didn't want to do the blocks, you could just use this as a bottom. So you could just have a nice top, a contrasting bottom, make it look really cool. If you had an image here that you have, you could have a lot of fun with this. So you don't have to do, the blocks, but I suggest you do. Next we have pattern piece D and pattern piece D are the two exterior side gussets and these also have their deck of the light attached, each one of them five eighths of an inch down from the top edge. All right, for pattern pieces E, these are for your zipper panels. Now these zipper panels are constructed in a very different way than what I'm used to and I love it. It's probably my favorite way to make zipper panels now, honestly. But you're gonna have two long strips of material and then on the back, you're gonna have two short strips of Decoville Light. And the placement of this is very specific. It has to be on one end, one inch away from the short end on each one and then centered. You'll see why when we get there, but it's, it's really cool. Another important pattern piece to pay attention to placement for Decoville Light are piece G. Now, Whichever method you're doing, you're going to have different piecing. So we're doing this method two, which means we're going to cut long strips of our contrast and our main, and then we're going to sew them together, cut them up, sew them together versus making a whole bunch of individual little squares. You can do either one, but if you're doing method two, you can see on the back, you're going to cut up squares of Decoville light and you're going to attach them. Now, make sure you know which is the top and the bottom. So the top edge, you're going to start three eighths of an inch down, draw a line, and then you're going to center your first block. The pattern's going to have placement for you to draw lines going all the way down, all six of these strips. And when you're placing your Decoville light, you're going to place your Decoville light so that the top edge of the Decoville light comes right against that line right underneath it and it's centered on the sides. So it's not centered between the two marked lines. It's going to touch the marked line on the top edge of the Decoville light, but it's going to center between the raw edges on the long sides. You're going to have six strips. So I'm going to have two of each material. However, if you want to have six totally different colors, that would also be really cool. I would love to see one like that. All right, pattern piece H are two cuts for our D-rings. These are just our exterior material. Pattern piece I is the slip pocket trim. This is just gonna go over the lining and just gives a cute little, little accent. Pattern piece J is the interior upper contrast. So this is one of those beautiful bags where the inside of the lining has like a nice little contrast piece that matches the outside. You're gonna have two cuts of that. I don't have any sort of stabilizer on that. And then we have pattern piece K. This is gonna be for the gusset interior lining. And I like to mix it up. You could use the same material as the exterior to give it like a nice cohesive look. Uh, I like to just be difficult and have a little bit of contrast. So I have my two cuts of contrasting material for that. All right, so here are all of our lining pieces. We're gonna have two cuts of pattern piece L, which are our two interior gusset panels. Two cuts of pattern piece M, which are the two lining main body panels. Pattern piece N is your zipper pocket panel. And then pattern piece O is your slip pocket panel. 
All of these are quilt cotton. All of them already have the woven interfacing attached to them. There's no seam around it or anything like that. You attach it completely. So the full pattern piece. So let's start with the D-ring tabs. Take both of your tab pieces and your two D-rings, and then on the back side of your tabs, draw a midpoint line running along the long edges. After you have those midpoint lines drawn, grab some double-sided tape, and for this I'm gonna use a quarter inch double-sided tape just so I only have to use one, and put some double-sided tape right over that line. And do this for both tabs, and then remove the paper from the tape and fold the long raw edges back, wrong sides together to meet that middle line. We're just gonna tuck in these raw edges just like that. And if you wanna use clips instead of the tape or clips and the tape, do whatever makes this easiest. Repeat this for your other tab. And now you can take these to the sewing machine and sew along both long folded edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you have your tabs top stitched, you're gonna just take them and wrap the back side around the flat part of your D-ring and pull them together. And you can tape these together like the pattern suggests, or you can just pull them together. It's hard to tell where the back side is, there we go. And then I'm gonna take them to the sewing machine and I'm just going to top stitch along the short edges of each of these at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And then once you have these either taped or stitched together on the ends, grab a ruler and let's mark half of an inch up from the bottom raw edge and just mark a line. You're gonna need this line later, so make sure it's not marked with some sort of air erasing marking tool. All right, you can put your little tabs to the side for now. Okay, now let's build our crossbody strap. Like I said, ours is just a piece of webbing, so we don't have to sew anything for this. Uh, where I'm using rivets, if you wanna stitch, you can do that instead. So the first thing I'm gonna do is grab a lighter and melt down the edges of my webbing so that it doesn't fray. And then I'm gonna grab one of my swivel hooks and I'm gonna thread my webbing into the swivel hook and then I like to fold down the raw edge of the webbing on the back side towards the swivel hook. I know it's dark, I'm sorry, it's hard to see. But I fold it down about half of an inch and then I fold the whole thing down again so that the raw edge is just tucked in like that. And then I'll grab my hole punch and I'll punch a hole right on that fold through all three layers of the webbing. So the folded over layer and then the other side of the webbing. And then I'll grab a rivet and just pop that through the hole. And there you go, now the swivel hook is attached with a rivet, easy peasy. So repeat that with the other side and the other swivel hook. And then once you have the rivets placed, you can take your rivet press and just press them down. So rivets are not necessary, but this is so much quicker and easier for me anyways than sewing. Uh, sewing this little tiny spot and trying to avoid hitting the hardware can be difficult. So if you're interested in rivets, I have a whole rivet press video. You can get the big press set. It's great for a lot of things, but if you're just gonna be using it for smaller things, this handheld, this is called the tabletop one, but I consider it a handheld one is also great. And then this is a really great hole punch. Once your strap is done, you can set it to the side. All right, now it's time to construct the lower front main panel, which is really what takes the most amount of time. So we're gonna try to do this as efficiently as possible. So take your six strips and lay them out. Lay them out how you think you want them in the end. Um, if you wanna be very precise, then get them exactly how you want them. Make sure that the top edges are the top on all pieces. So you can see one edge of my Decabo light has three eighths of an inch spacing and the other one has a bigger spacing. You want it to be the same. On the, so make sure you have the top, just triple check. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna double all three of these up and then I'm going to clip them together. So I'm just gonna lay a main and a contrasting strip together, right sides together, and then I'm gonna clip along the edge I want to sew them. Now, right now, this isn't the most important thing, but later it will be. So always make sure you know which edge you're sewing on. So I'm gonna do this for all three sets. All right, now I'm gonna take these three units to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew along each clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, so the pattern is gonna have you kind of sew all three of these strips together and then work on top stitching. I'm gonna to top stitch first just because it's gonna be easier to sew them that way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up and if you wanna use double-sided tape like the pattern suggests, go ahead and do that. Uh, I don't find it's that useful depending on the material you're using. If you're using like a quilt cotton or something, um, you can iron it, but the double-sided tape will help. If you're using a nylon material, the double-sided tape will help a lot but with cork, um, with this small of a seam, I find that it just kind of pops right back up. So I'm just gonna finger press along these seams. It's not gonna stay open on its own, that's okay. I'm just gonna prep them a little bit by finger pressing them. Okay, and once I have those just 
finger press a little bit. I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to open up the seam on the top and we're going to top stitch along both edges of the seam at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And the point of this is to flatten this out and hold the seam down. So as I'm sewing, I'm just going to be lifting this up and checking and just kind of pressing it down with my finger before it gets under the needle. And I'm going to do this for all three panels. Now that we have those three together, we just have to attach them all. So lay them out so that they're alternating, if that's the look you want. And I'm just gonna do what I just did, but one at a time. So I'm gonna take the two on the left over here and lay them right sides together, making sure that I have the opposite materials coming right sides together, and then grab some clips and clip along this edge. And now I'm gonna sew along this clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, once you have this sewn together, open this up and finger press the seam open or tape it open or iron it open whatever method is gonna work best for you. And now we're gonna flip this over and we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and top stitch along both edges of that seam, holding the seam flat and open. And then you're gonna just repeat that with the final strip of material here by just laying it right sides together and then sewing along this edge at a quarter inch seam allowance and then top stitching along the seam to hold it open. So as you have this all sewn together and flattened out, you're gonna make a series of marks going perpendicular to the strips. And when you do this, make sure you start on the top edge. So flip this over and look at your Decoville light and the edge that has that 3 8 inch gap, that's the top. And we're gonna measure from there and make our vertical marks just like this. Okay, now the pattern suggests that you sew an eighth of an inch along each side of each one of these vertical marks and that's just to hold all these pieces in place so that when we piece it together next, they don't start splitting at the seam. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, just do kind of like a top stitch basting stitch along each vertical mark, eighth of an inch on both sides of it. So those stitches that we just made are not going to be seen in the end. Those are really just to hold down the material stitches. However, if you are at this point here and you're like, I really like how this looks, at any point you can just stop and then grab your C template and line it up however you want it to look, like this or like this, and cut it out and that can be your main panel. But we're going to continue on per the pattern. And now what we're going to do is we're going to flip this so that the top edge, so again that 3 8 inch space between the Decoville light and the edge of the cork is over here on the left. We're going to grab our ruler and we're going to measure two and a half inches from the raw left edge here and cut the strip. And it should match up with that first marked line. And then we're going to continue doing that. So each one of these strips should be two and a half inches wide and each cut should really line up with your marked line. So you should now have six strips that are pieced together like this. And this is where the layout does start to matter. So you need to pay attention to what areas you're stitching. So we're going to flip these so that they go back and forth just like this. So we have like a checkerboard pattern. And now I'm gonna put these strips together just like I did the first time. So I'm gonna have three sets of two strips. And again, just make sure you know which side you need to be sewing. So for this first set over here, I'm gonna flip them right sides together. And I'm gonna make sure I add my clips on the right side over here. So now that these three sections are clipped together, I'm going to sew along each of the clipped edges at a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, now top stitching this part gets tricky because pressing the seam open is difficult. If tape helps, go ahead and use it. Once again, I find just with a stiffer material like cork, 
tape is not is not gonna cut it. Um, I'm just again using my fingers. I'll show you one of my favorite tools is this seam roller right here. It's nice and heavy and it does help flatten it out a little bit. When I'm pre-flattening, when I'm opening these seams right now, I'm not intending for them to stay open. My intention is really just to get the material to understand what I'm gonna want it to do in a minute, because it's so stiff. So it's like warming it up. So I'm just doing that. There we go. And I'm gonna repeat that with the other two panels. All right, once you have these panels pressed as much as possible, now we're gonna go to the sewing machine. And once again, I'm going to just be paying attention with my fingers, keeping those seams as pressed open as possible. And I'm gonna top stitch along both edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance to get these as flat as possible. Once you have them sewn up into their three panels, you can see we're just gonna put them together like that and have a fun little checkered board. Look, it's so cute. I love this. So let's just start with two of them. Again, pay attention to make sure you have the right seam. Clip them together and clip together. And once you have that edge clipped together, let's sew along it at a quarter inch seam allowance. Now, once you have those sewn together, press open that seam with your fingers. And then let's go top stitch along both edges of the seam at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once again, making sure that the seam on the back is spread open and you are stitching the seam in place. And then finally take your last panel and again just make sure it's it looks the way you want it to look that's that's it it doesn't if you want it to look like you know in a different way then make it that way just make sure it looks like you want it to look and then we're gonna flip this right sides together and clip along the edge and then just like we did previously we're going to sew along this edge at a quarter inch seam allowance and then we're gonna top stitch the seam open just like we've done multiple times and there you go, now you have your big checkered panel. Um, at this point, I do suggest you check your bobbin, and if you need to get a new bobbin of thread, go do that. Maybe put some oil in your machine. This is a lot of work for your machine, and we haven't even started making the bag yet. So if you need to take a break, take a break. Give your machine a break for a moment. But once you're ready, let's cut out our main panel. So the main panel should go diagonally across these checkered marks. So figure out how you have to get that the way you want it. And I'm gonna grab some of these pretty pattern weights here to hold this down. And then I'll grab my silver ink pen and I'm just gonna trace my pattern piece C over this. Now you'll notice you do have quite a bit of excess and it's like, but it's so pretty. You can use that. Um, I'm actually going to try using some of these scraps to make one of my little Anna mini wallets. And then I'll edge coat the edges to prevent any fraying. So I'll, I'll show you that um, in the end of this video if I can get it done. Then I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. So don't don't throw away these scraps. These scraps you work too hard on this panel to throw away the scraps. You can definitely find small projects to use them for later. All right. Once you have that traced out, grab your scissors and just cut out that panel. All right. How beautiful is that? I know it's more work. I know it takes time, but I'm telling you it's worth it. It's worth it 100%. This is just gorgeous, just gorgeous. Okay, and you were supposed to do this before before I did this, but if you want, go to the sewing machine and just baste around all the edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance just to hold all these seams together because you don't want any of these starting to kind of pull apart as we're working on this. All right, set this to the side for just a moment. We're gonna, we're gonna come right back to this. So now grab your upper band panel and on the bottom long edge, draw a line that is one inch up from that bottom edge and then grab some double-sided tape and add some double-sided tape right below that line. And then remove the paper from your tape and take that bottom raw edge and fold it up wrong sides together so that the long edge meets that marked line. This is just kind of wrapping around that deck of the light. 
and give it a good press with your fingers. And then grab your bottom panel that you just got done making and then draw a line that's half of an inch down from the top straight edge. And what you're gonna do is then add some double-sided tape right along the top of this bottom panel here, just along the top raw edge. Okay, so now take the paper off that tape that you just added and then grab your upper panel and with the bottom folded edge on the bottom, you're gonna line up that folded edge with the marked line, that's the half of an inch marked line, and make sure you are covering it just slightly so you don't see your mark if you use like a vinyl marker like I did. All right, so just line it up. It should be the same width and press it down over that tape. How cute is this? It's so cute. So now we're gonna top stitch just above this folded edge here on the upper panel at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So now if you have a bag tie and you wanna add it to the front of the bag, now's a good time to add it because we're going to be sewing this onto the gusset very soon. Um, previously I put my bag tag like right there, which is a nice place, but I think I might put it right underneath. Let me see. I don't want to cut any seams, so I need to see where the midpoint is. All right, so I measured about one inch down from that midpoint mark, so the midpoint on the connection between the upper panel and the main lower panel, and I just used my washer to mark the slits for the prongs of my bag tag. Now I'll grab my seam ripper and just carefully rip right along that seam. And I was measuring out to make sure that I didn't rip in, into any stitches when I was doing this. So if I put this a little bit higher, I would have ripped right into that seam there. I didn't want to do that. So I'm gonna grab my bag tag and just insert it into the slits like that. Oh yeah, that's cute. Flip it over, add the washer on the back. If you want to add a little bit of glue on the back side of your bag tag, you can to make sure it doesn't slip around or anything. And then I'm gonna grab my tape here. And this is just duct tape. And I'm just covering those prongs so it doesn't wear down the lining. And how cute is that? Such a cute front panel. So place this to the side for just a moment. Now grab your two exterior gusset panels and lay them right sides together so all edges are matching. We are focusing on the bottom straight edge here. So clip these together, right sides together. And now let's sew along this clipped edge at a half of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. Once you have those sewn together, open the panels up and either iron, finger press, tape, whatever you need to do, get that seam nice and open, keep it open, and go back to the sewing machine and top stitch along both sides of that seam at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And that's gonna hold down this seam in place so it stays flat. Okay, so now you want your gusset, your front exterior panel, and your back exterior panel, and we're gonna just build the exterior of the bag now. So make sure you have midpoints marked on the top and bottom of both the front and the back panel, and then also mark the midpoints on the top edges of your gusset. The seam right here will serve as the midpoint for the gusset, so you don't need to mark that. Now let's start with the front panel. Lay the front panel right side up. Take your gusset, lay your gusset right side down. Match up the bottom midpoint mark of your front panel with the middle seam here of your gusset, and then use some clips to hold these together and then rotate the top left corner up to meet the top left corner of your front main panel. Line up those corners and clip together. Do the same thing on the right side with the top right corners. Okay, and now I find it easiest to flip this over and work from the back of the main panel. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna continue clipping all the straight edges, so don't worry about the corners right here just yet. Just worry about the straight bits. And then what you're gonna do is for these corners, you're just gonna tuck in the front kind of like a bowl and it and honestly should just line up perfectly. This is just a perfectly fitted gusset. So it, it, you shouldn't have to maneuver anything around too much. All right, so now if you wanna make this a little bit easier to sew at the sewing machine, look at the corners and on the gusset side, you can make just a couple little tiny cuts into the gusset. That'll help the gusset spread out a bit while it's going around those corners, but you don't need a whole lot. It, like I said, it's a pretty perfect fit. So I'm just gonna do two for now, but I always have my scissors by me at the machine in case I need to add more. All right, with the gusset wrong side up, we're gonna sew along this clipped edge at a half of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. I like to use a stiletto. You might even find it easier to use a zipper foot here because you are gonna be getting close to where it's poking up right here and you don't wanna flatten that out too much. So I'm gonna use a zipper foot, half of an inch seam allowance, go slow. All 
All right, and once you do one row of stitching, if you wanna do a second row of stitching, just start at the bottom of the upper panel here and do a second row of stitching just outside that first one. So just a little bit closer to the raw edges, about an eighth of an inch maybe or less from the first row of stitching. And what that's gonna allow is that when you turn this bag right side out and it kind of pulls on those threads, you're not gonna see the threads. Have you ever had that where like the material pulls on the thread so much that you can see the stitching going down the seam? Um, it's because it's just too much force on those threads. By doing a second row of stitching, that relieves the pressure from those threads so you don't see them. All right, now if you wanna trim down the seam allowance, you can. I would suggest trimming the seam allowance down below that upper panel. So I'm just pretty much cutting the seam allowance in half, making it a quarter of an inch. And this question comes up a lot, like, well, why, why have a half of an inch seam allowance? Why not just do a quarter of an inch seam allowance from the beginning? And every designer has their own reasons, but here's the thing about bigger seam allowances, especially with curves. I don't know if you can see, but like as I go around this curve, my gusset and my main panel start to kind of pull away from one another. Um, so they're not perfectly lined up right on the raw edges. It's just, it's just not possible for me to make it perfect. But with a bigger seam allowance, that allows that to happen. They can pull away from each other and have a little bit of a gap here and it's still gonna turn out really well because that bigger seam allowance kind of makes up for any mistakes you make. Um, having a smaller seam allowance, like a quarter inch, means that I really have to make sure those two panels are lined up exactly. And I, I, don't, I don't need that, I don't need that. All right, so if you wanna take a little sneaky peeky, you can pop this out real quick. I always like to do this and just look. How beautiful is that? <gasps> that is such, it reminds me of like English tea time or something, you know? What a beautiful, beautiful bag. This is gonna turn out lovely. All right, now we're gonna repeat that for the back panel. And I'll tell you, out of many of the curvy bags we've done, this is one of the easiest to piece together. The, the curved part, in my opinion, is not the hard part. So lay your back panel right side up and then match up the midpoint mark on the bottom of the back panel with the midpoint on the bottom of your gusset. It's probably gonna be easier to just pull the back panel up like this and clip together those midpoints. And then once again, we're gonna go to the corners. So I always, I always clip midpoints, corners, straight edges, and then the curvy corners last. And once you get to those corners, once again, just kind of tuck it in. And if you have a little bit of folding on the back main panel along the corners, don't worry about it. We can clip into the gusset to make up for that. And then once again, I'll just go in the gusset only. Don't clip into the main panel. The main panel already has enough material. It's the gusset that needs to spread out a little bit more. And don't over clip into the gusset because then you'll have the opposite problem where your gusset is like spreading out way too much and you're trying to like fold it over itself to accommodate the main panel. So that's why it's always best just to start with like two or three little clips and then keep your scissors at the machine with you if you need them. So we're gonna once again sew this with the gusset wrong side up. We're gonna sew it a half of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end. And once again, use a zipper foot and a stiletto to help. All right, so I went ahead and did a second row of stitching as well, just like I did on the front panel. I, I also start about an inch to an inch and a half down from the top edge. You don't wanna start at the very top edge with that second row of stitching because we wanna spread the seam open on the top here and doing that second row will make it hard to do that. So we don't, we don't do that. And then on the back panel, once again, I'm going to trim the seam allowance in half and I'm only trimming it in half where I have that second row of stitching not on the top. So now you can grab some double-sided tape and we're gonna use that to help open up these seams on the top edge here. So just add a little bit of tape to the top bit, just like an inch of tape, not much at all. And that's on the back side of the top of your seam. And again, the goal here is to open the seams to make it easier to sew later. I will tell you, when you sew this top edge to the lining, that's probably the hardest part of the whole bag, in my opinion. So you wanna do whatever you can to get this to lay flat. Now my tape might not last until then, but we'll see. I'm just going to do that. And if you need to kind of clip into the seam a little bit on the sides over here, 
so that it's not fighting the material. That's fine. There we go. Nice and flat. So I'm going to do this for all four seams on the top edge. All right. So now I have all these corners taped back. This should stay. I think it'll stay. But you see now it's nice and flat and it's as thin as possible up here, which is the goal because it's going to get thick. Now grab your two D-ring tabs and we're going to insert these so that the D-ring hardware is inside the bag. The raw edge is poking out the top edge. Find that half inch line you marked and center your D-ring tab on the center of the top of the gusset and make sure that the raw edge of your gusset lines up with that half inch line. So the D-ring tab should overextend the top by a half of an inch. That's the point of it. And now we're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to just sew these down at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So I use stitching down those D-rings as an opportunity to also stitch down the top edge where the seam is open. So that is going to help keep those side seams nice and spread open. So that's great. All right, you can set this to the side now. So now we're going to work on the lining slip pocket. So on the back side of the lining slip pocket, on the shorter edges, you're going to mark in one inch and draw a line and then grab a couple pieces of double-sided tape and add the double-sided tape just outside those lines. So a little bit outside closer to the raw edges because what we want to do is we want to use this double-sided tape to fold the raw edges back. Now, if you want to just use an iron and you don't want to use the tape, that is an option, but the tape will help make sure that this does not move around at all as we're folding it. So you see how we just fold the short edges wrong side back to meet that line. Do this for both sides and now fold this in half wrong sides together so the raw edges are coming to meet one another and you can use tape here to tape this together or you can baste this together which is what i'm going to do i'm going to take it to the sewing machine and i'm just going to baste along this top raw edge that we're clipping at an eighth of an inch seam allowance just to hold it together but again the pattern suggests using tape and that works just as well so now grab your slip pocket trim and on the back side, draw a midpoint line running along the long edges. And then right below that midpoint line, add a piece of double-sided tape, remove the paper from that double-sided tape and keep your slip trim wrong side up. Grab your slip pocket here. If you want to smoosh it down, you can. You can press this down as well if you'd like. And what we're going to do is we're just going to take our slip pocket and we're going to lay it over the tape and make sure the top raw edge of your material is lined up with that midpoint mark or, or just a skosh below it. And the reason I say just below it is because what we're going to do is we're going to fold this over and wrap it around that raw edge. And if your material has some thickness to it, if you put it right on the midpoint line, when you wrap this around, this side will be higher. The cork piece here is going to be higher up than the back side and we need them to be pretty even. So now what I'm doing is I'm just wrapping this around the front and I'm gonna use clips to hold this in place. If you wanna use tape, you can use tape. I'm gonna use clips. This is just a really nice accent. I love slip pockets like this. You can make a basic slip pocket, you know, with just the fabric, but adding a little and the little accent with the scraps is so pretty. All right, once you have that clipped in place, let's top stitch right above the raw edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, once you have that trimmed in place, you can trim down the excess on the sides. There you go, so it's all nice and even. So next thing we wanna do is we wanna mark a midpoint line running right along the front of the panel. So this is the right side of the panel for me. I'm using an air erasing marker for this. You can use chalk, but you need that midpoint mark and we're also gonna sew over that in just a moment. So now grab one of your main lining panels and make sure you mark the midpoint on the top and the bottom. Now we're gonna measure one inch down from the top edge of our lining panel and then grab our slip pocket and lay it right side up on top and match up the midpoint line on your slip pocket with the midpoint of the top edge of your main panel, but keeping it one inch down just like that. And now I like to use washi tape to hold this down. Specifically, the Sally Tomato washi tape is really good. It's just sticky enough to actually hold it in place, but if I sew over it or something, it's not gonna gunk up my needle. A lot of times I find washi tape is just not sticky enough with fabric and it comes right off. But this will, this will hold it in place for just a minute, which is what I need. So now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're going to do top stitch along the sides and the bottom at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the top edge here. 
at the beginning and the end. All right, once you have the sides and the bottom stitched in place, if you want to just leave this as one big slip pocket, you can, but we're gonna add a middle line here. So we still have that midpoint mark that we made. I'm gonna start at the bottom and I'm gonna go up just one side of it. And I'm gonna stop right below the trim and then go back down the other side. So I'm starting and ending in the same spot here and it's like two stitches are covering this middle line. The reason I'm not going past the trim is because I will be putting a rivet here. If you're not gonna be doing a rivet, I suggest you go up a little bit past the trim over and then back down. But if you are using rivets, don't go up onto the cork piece here. So now if you wanna add rivets, this is a good time to do it. I'm gonna add three rivets, one on each corner and one in the middle. When I'm punching the hole for my rivets, my goal is that I never punch through any of my top stitching because I don't want it to unravel. So for the corners, I'm just gonna go right inside the top stitching and it's going through the material, my lining material, and it's also going through that cork accent. And again, I'm just double checking that I'm not going through any stitching. So I'm gonna do this for both corners. And then for the center, I'm just gonna go right above that midpoint line. And remember, I did not stitch at all on the midpoint um, on the cork piece. So now I can just grab my little rivets here and add them in here. And this is decorative, but it's also really useful. If you use this pocket a lot, you're gonna pull on it a lot. And over time, that's gonna rip the stitching. The rivets just help prevent that. It makes your bag last longer. So now I'm gonna grab my rivet press here and just press these rivets in place. And there we go. How cute is that little slip pocket? I love it. You can set this to the side. So now grab the remaining main lining panel and flip it over and we're gonna look, work on the wrong side. Now the template does have a line you can just cut out and trace to do this. Or if you wanna do the boxing like I do, uh, I measured one and a quarter inch down from the top edge, drew a horizontal line, did another horizontal line below that, half of an inch lower. So the box is half of an inch tall. And then I made it so it's seven inches wide. So using that midpoint mark, I measured three and a half inches to the left, three and a half inches to the right, make my little half inch by seven inch box. And then I marked a midpoint line going down the center of this. And then I also marked half of an inch in from each short edge of the box. And from that half of an inch mark, I'm just gonna draw a line that extends to the corners of my box. Just like this. So now I'm gonna grab some scissors and my seam ripper. I'm using my seam ripper to get started. I'm just gonna rip right along that center line. But that's again, just to get started. And then I'm gonna grab my scissors and I'm going to cut along that center line until I get to the tip of that little triangle I drew. And then I'm gonna go off the diagonals. So I'm gonna go along the slants until I get right to the corner of my box. So I'm gonna do this for both sides. Okay, so you can use an iron to hold this open um, or you can use double-sided tape, whichever one is easiest for you. I'm gonna add some double-sided tape. I'm adding it right outside of my box. So right above and right below those seven inch long horizontal lines. And then I'm gonna also add a couple small cuts right on that half of an inch short sides to help hold back those little triangles. All right, so let's start on the long bottom section. I'm gonna remove my paper and I'm just gonna fold my material back and stick it onto the tape. And I'm trying to fold right on that line that I made. If you wanna make um, other horizontal lines that are a quarter of an inch above and below the boxed lines so that you have reference points on where the material needs to go, you can do that. Uh, but I, fi I find just eyeballing it works pretty well. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the top long edge and then I'll repeat that with the short edges as well. And that gives me a nice clean little window and I don't have to worry about this stuff moving around on me too much. It's not gonna hold it forever, but it will hold it for long enough. So now grab your nine and a half inch long zipper and if you haven't already put the zipper pull on, go ahead and add it. And now take your double-sided tape and add double-sided tape to the bottom and top of your zipper tape right along the edge of both sides. There's a lot of time where I feel like the tape is completely optional. This is not one of them. You definitely want to use the tape here because this is gonna be the only thing holding the zipper in place for a little while. So lay your zipper right side up and when the zipper closes, it should be moving towards the left and then grab your main panel and lay that right side up over the zipper and then just center it over your zipper tape. So try to make sure it has the same amount on the front and back. 
Once you have it where you like, I like to just fold down the top edge and remove the paper from the top double-sided tape. And then put this back over it and tape it down along that top edge. Right, make sure you pull your zipper pull up and then flip up the bottom and remove the paper from the bottom tape here. And then fold your main panel back down and tape it to that bottom edge. And that looks so cute. This is a cute little zipper here. All right, so now flip this back over so we're looking at the back side of the zipper tape now. And then, I know there's a lot of tape on this one. Then add some double-sided tape to the very bottom edge of the back of your zipper tape. And then you're gonna grab your zipper pocket lining piece. And what we're gonna do is we're pretty much just gonna lay this right side down over the back of our zipper, just like this. But we're gonna use the tape to help hold it in place. So take the paper off the tape. And then just like I said, you have your main panel wrong side up, zipper wrong side up, zipper lining wrong side up. And then just line it up with the bottom edge of your zipper tape and press it on the tape. There we go. Now we're gonna flip this around so it's right side up and we're going to top stitch only on the bottom edge of the zipper here. And you're gonna go past the corner edges by about an eighth of an inch. So you're gonna go from just past the short edge along the zipper tape, just past the other short edge. I do like to back stitch once at the beginning and the end, and then I pull all the threads to the back and tie them in knots to help secure it. But we're not doing the rest of the box yet, just the bottom edge. So once you have this stitched on, you can flip this over to the back side and just below that stitching along the edge, you can add another piece of double-sided tape. Now this is optional, but the point of this is to kind of help hold the lining down because we're not top stitching this lining down and away from the zipper. And you don't want this to get caught up in the zipper when you're using it. So the tape is just going to hold the material out of the way. And that's more for usage, not for sewing purposes. So just smooth it out nice and flat. And this is what it should look like on the front. Here's what it looks like on the back. So now we're gonna grab some more double-sided tape. I told you we're using a lot today. And we're gonna add this along the top edge on the back of our zipper tape. And then remove the paper from the tape and then flip the lining panel up so the raw edge comes up and matches up with the top edge of the zipper and then just push it down onto the tape. So let's flip this over. And from the front, we're going to now top stitch along the short edges, the other long edge on the top and then the remaining short edge. So just start at one of the endings of your bottom top stitching and go up at an eighth of an inch seam allowance going around till you get to the other end. I'm going to back stitch once at the beginning and the end. And once again, I pull all the threads through the back and then knot them. All right, so now flip this over and looking at the back side, you're gonna kind of flatten down this lining piece here and then cut it with scissors along that bottom fold, just like this. So now with the lining panel right side up, what I did was I folded up the sides and on the bottom edge here, I marked half of an inch up from the bottom and then two inches over from the right side and I made a little box like this. So as I sew the side over here, I'm gonna sew close to the zipper. So I'm trying to go over that little triangle bit there and I'm going to stitch down from the top edge of the zipper all the way until I get to that horizontal line and then I'm just gonna trace that line over and down and back stitch really well over here. This is gonna leave an opening that we'll use later in, the, in turning the bag out. Same thing on the other side. I'm gonna sew over, I have about an inch over here. So I'm gonna sew as close as I can, trying to go over that little triangle bit, down the side of my pocket lining, until I get to that, that half of an inch from the bottom line, and then I'm gonna continue sewing over and down. So like I said, this is about half of an inch by two inch rectangles here on the bottom. So now once you have that sewn, you can trim the seam allowance down everywhere except on the opening on the bottom here. So for example, I'm just gonna cut in along my little rectangle down here. And I'm just following the stitching, cutting about a quarter of an inch away from the stitching, all the way up to the top. Let me do this for the other side as well. All right, your little zip pocket is now done. You can set it to the side. All right, first thing we wanna do when we're making the top zipper is to prepare our zipper. So if you haven't already added your zipper pull to the remaining zipper tape, go ahead and do that. So you can see with my zipper, when I close my zipper going towards the left, it stays closed here on the right side. And when I open it, it opens on the left. So you wanna remember that because what we're gonna do is we're going to fold back the zipper on the open edge over here. So go ahead and open up that left a bit there, grab a ruler and a marking tool. And we're gonna measure three quarters of an inch down from the raw edge on the open side of the zipper. 
and just make a mark right on the very, very edge of your zipper tape. You don't want this to be seen in the end. All right, once you have those marked, what you're gonna do is at that mark, you're gonna fold the zipper tape back, wrong sides together, and the zipper coils are gonna naturally just turn away from the center of the zipper. Let them do that. If you wanna grab a teeny tiny piece of double-sided tape and put it right underneath where it's folding over to hold it in place, you can. Um, I use clips and then I just hold it with my stiletto at the sewing machine. So I'm gonna add a clip there. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, just pinching along the zipper tape and letting it fold back. There we go. And now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna top stitch right over these folded edges here, right along the outside of the zipper tape at an eighth of an inch seam allowance to hold it in place like this. I also suggest you top stitch right over the edge of the closed end of your zipper tape so that if you accidentally open the zipper while we're working on it, it doesn't fly off. All right, your zipper is now prepped. You can set that to the side. Now we're gonna prepare our zipper panel. So lay them both wrong side up and then grab a ruler and mark one inch in from each short edge. So both sides. Now grab your double-sided tape and add the tape just outside of the lines closer to the raw edge. So on the left side, it's just to the left of that one inch line. And do this for all four edges where it's going just outside closer to the raw edge. If you feel more comfortable, you can just add the double-sided tape right on the short raw edges instead. All right, now remove the paper from the tape and one at a time. We're just gonna fold the short edge back, wrong sides together, so the short edge meets that mark. And do this for all four of your short edges. All right, so now let's start attaching this. Grab one zipper panel and you're gonna lay it right side up, wrong side down, and you want the Decoville light side to be over here on the left. So on the right side over here, there's nothing. So then measure eight inches over from the right side here, eight inches over, and then make a mark where that is. And then you guessed it, more double-sided tape. <laughs> Grab your double-sided tape and starting at that eight inch mark, just lay it right along the very bottom edge of your zipper panel all the way to the end. Go ahead and remove the paper and take your zipper right side up and we're gonna lay it just like this. So when the zipper is right side up, we're working on the bottom edge right here and the folded over bit is going to line up right at that eight inch mark and the raw edge of your zipper tape is going to line up right along the bottom raw edge of the panel and you're gonna hold it in place with that tape. Now for these steps, if you want, instead of using the tape, you could just lay this out and clip it in place right here at the eight inch mark and then baste it down at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. That's another option, but we love tape. So now we're gonna add more double-sided tape, which again, this is why it's so important. Your double-sided tape is not super sticky. And we're gonna add it right along the bottom edge of our zipper tape where it's connected to the zipper panel. The double-sided tape here also is optional. If you basted your zipper down, you don't have to use the double-sided tape right now. And then you're going to take the other end of your zipper panel and you're gonna flip it over so you're looking at the wrong side. And then the zipper panel's right sides together, line up the folded over edges and line up the raw edges and tape this zipper panel down. There we go. So this is what it should look like. The top part of your zipper tape is hanging out over here. The bottom part is over here. I mean, you could have your zipper together. I find it easier to do this with the zipper separated. So we have it just like this. And now we're gonna sew along this bottom folded edge over here at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. So once you have that sewn, cut off the excess zipper tape that's folded over on the top here, and then also cut a little corner off the fold, just a little bit. Now we're gonna take this zipper panel and we're gonna flip it right side out, gently, okay, very gently. If you want to carefully and very, very gently use a turning tool on that corner, you can. Just again, don't be forceful with any of this. And then flip these zipper panels wrong sides together and line them up along the raw edge and clip together. Make sure you're pulling the zipper tape out. This is where you might find it easier to close your zipper so you can get it nice and straight and you can tug along that seam. All right, once you have it nice and flat and everything is squared away, we're gonna top stitch along all four edges of the zipper panel at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, isn't that pretty? I love this zipper panel. So now we're gonna repeat that and I'm gonna walk you through it again just to make sure you got it. 
So let's grab the remaining zipper panel. And once again, Decoville light goes on the left and fold it right side up. This time we're gonna measure eight inches from the right side again, but on the top edge. Last time we did the bottom edge, this time we're measuring over on the top edge over here. And then grab your double-sided tape and add that between that eight inch mark and the right edge of your zipper panel on the top edge. And then match up the edge of the zipper tape with the raw edge of the zipper panel. And before we move on too far, flip this over and make sure that these folded over edges here on the right, they match up, they should. As long as those match up, then you should be good. Now grab more double-sided tape, or if you're not using double-sided tape for this part, go ahead and just baste this down at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And I'm gonna add my tape along the top edge here, and then remove that paper. And then I'm gonna unzip this to get the other panel out of the way while I fold the left side of my panel up and over so that the folded over edge meets the other folded over edge on the bottom of the zipper tape. And then I'm just going to line it up along the top raw edge and use that double-sided tape to stick in place. If you're not using tape, then just clip this together. All right, now we're gonna sew along this top edge here along the top of the zipper tape at an 3 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. All right, once you have that stitched, cut off the excess zipper tape that's folded over and then also cut off the corner. And I am cutting into that zipper tape as well. And if you'd like, if you have those raw bits of the zipper tape, you can just gently grab a lighter to try to get in there and melt the zipper tape because the zipper tape is usually made of plastic threads and they can unravel pretty easily. But if you melt them with the lighter, then they won't. And now, once again, gently push the zipper out. And if you wanna use a not sharp turning tool, nothing too pokey, and just super gently go in there for that corner. Do that. And then I'm just gonna fold these two panels, wrong sides together, and matching up their long raw edges and clipping together. Now, if you need to, you can close the zipper and kind of pull on the teeth a little bit to get it nice and straight. And look how pretty that is. And now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're gonna top stitch along all four edges of the zipper panel at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. How stinking cute is this little zipper, huh? Isn't that so cute? I love these. All right, before we attach this, what we wanna do is we wanna find the midpoint along both outer edge of our zipper panels. So just fold this in half and then pinch and you can mark it with a marking tool if you'd like or you can just use scissors to kind of clip into the material. You just need those midpoint marks on both long edges. Now grab your main lining piece that has the zipper and lay it right side up and then grab your zipper panel and lay it right side up and the zipper should open towards the right, close towards the left. Now using those midpoint marks on the zipper panel and also on the main lining piece, line up the zipper panel so it's centered on the lining. And then if you wanna use tape here, you can. I'm just gonna use clips for this part. So I'm just gonna clip these together. If you'd like, you can baste these together at an eighth of an inch seam allowance or just use clips. Next, grab your upper contrast piece and make sure you have midpoints marked on the top and bottom edge. The bottom edge is gonna be the shorter edge, so it's gonna be just like this. Flip this right side down, match up the midpoints of this with the midpoints of your main panel and your zipper panel, and you can tape them together or you can clip them together, whichever you prefer. You'll notice that if you use tape, and I hope a lot of you do use a lot of tape in this one, you're gonna have very precise results. Tape makes it so that nothing moves around while you're, while you're prepping everything and while you're sewing it, and you're gonna get the most precise results like that. Clips are great too, I love clips, um, but things can kind of move around when you're working with it. So now we're gonna sew along this clipped edge at a half of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. All right, once this is sewn together, you're gonna lift up that upper panel and the zipper panel just like that so that all the seam goes behind the bottom lining panel just like that. And now we're gonna top stitch right along the bottom lining panel here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, holding that seam down. Isn't this cute? This is how it's gonna, this is so cute. All right, now grab your lining slip pocket and lay it right side up. And then take your zipper panel and flip this over so that again, the zipper panel is right side up and match the midpoints on the top edge of the lining panel with the top edge of your zipper panel and you can tape or clip these together. And then grab your remaining upper panel and then line it up so that the bottom edge is gonna be right sides together with the zipper panel. Match up those midpoint marks. Once again, if you wanna use tape, use your tape. 
and then just clip all three of these layers together. Also, if you prefer, you could have um, basted the zipper panel down to the lining panel first, so that way you're not worried about three pieces of material staying together. I know that can be a little tricky. So you always, you always have options to make this easier. All right, once you have that clipped, we're gonna sew along this clipped edge at a half of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. All right, once that's stitched in place, once again, you gotta move everything out of the way, but move everything up except for the lining panel with the slip pocket, keep that down. And so the seam we've been working on should be behind the lining panel. Flatten it out with your fingers or with an iron if you prefer. And we're gonna top stitch right at the top edge of this lining panel at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You guys, this is just beautiful. This is just beautiful. Okay, one thing I want you guys to think about before we move on is when this is inside the bag, if you want this to close with the zipper going towards the left, like you want this to be the front of the bag and close when this goes to the left, make note right now of which pocket is on which side. So for example, for me, the way I have it set up, my zipper pocket is gonna go against the back panel. When we insert this later, we're gonna have to remember that. On my tester bag, I didn't really think about it, and my zipper closes to the right, which is not the end of the world, but it's not what I prefer. So just think about that. If you mixed around your panels or changed up your pockets or whatever, just think about that now, which panel needs to go against the back. All right, set this to the side for just a moment. So now grab your two lining gusset panels and your two lining upper gusset panels and taking one gusset panel, lay it right side up, grab one of the upper gusset panels and we're gonna attach it just like this. So we're gonna flip this over so it's right sides together with the kind of like bottleneck shape over here and clip these two together just like that. Do this with the other lining lower and upper gusset panels. And now we're gonna sew along these two clipped edges at a half of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end each time. Once you have those attached, open the seam so it's spread open like this and get it as flat as possible. And then we're gonna take both of these to the sewing machine and we're gonna top stitch along both edges of each seam at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, once both lining gussets are prepped, you're gonna lay them right sides together and we're gonna be focusing on the bottom edge right here. So just line up those flat bottom edges and clip together. And now we're gonna sew along this edge at a half of an inch seam allowance, backstitch at the beginning and the end. Once those are sewn together, you can use an iron if you'd like or just finger press this and press that seam open, and just like we've been doing, we're gonna top stitch along both edges of the seam at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Alrighty, your gusset is done. Now we're gonna put together the lining. So let's grab our lining unit here and let's open up that zipper. Again, be very careful that you don't lose your zipper pull. You might wanna just put a clip on the end of the zipper tape just as an extra precaution. There we go. I'm gonna flip that out of the way, and I'm gonna flip it up and out of the way. So not, not over here, it's going over here. That's important, okay? We need this out of the way. It gets confusing otherwise. So I have my zipper panel right side up and I'm gonna take my gusset and I'm gonna lay it right side down. And I'm gonna match up the midpoint mark on my zipper main panel with the midpoint mark, which is just the seam on my gusset. And I'm gonna clip these together. Now you might notice that this pocket down here wants to get in there. We don't want it in the, it's not in the party. It doesn't get to come but we'll take care of that in just a moment. So I'm just gonna clip these together down here. And then I'm gonna take the left top corner and I'm gonna pull it up to meet the left top corner accent over here and clip these top corners together. We're, we're building this the exact same way we built the exterior. So if, if you got through that, this, this will be easier for the most part. You just gotta make sure you don't sew a bunch of the stuff into the seam. But overall, the material is thinner, and if we have plates, you can't see them in the end, so it's easier. So now I'm gonna pull this stuff out of the way, and I'm gonna clip the top right corners together. Again, zipper stays out of the party. The only things we're sewing together are the gusset and the lining panel. None of this pocket material, no zipper, nothing like that. So now I'm gonna flip this over so I'm looking at the back of the lining main panel, and I'm gonna take the bottom edge of that zipper pocket and I'm gonna flip it up and clip it to the top of the panel so I don't have to worry about sewing over it. And then just like we did with the exterior, I'm gonna clip the straight edges first, and then I'm gonna tuck in these corners and clip the corners into the gusset, and if it looks like the material is just rippling a lot, it means we just need to spread the gusset out just a, just a scotch. 
So I'm going to grab my scissors and I'm going to cut only into the gusset. About two or three cuts. You can always do more at the machine if you need it. So I'm going to repeat that with the other corner. Okay, now with the gusset wrong side up, I'm going to grab my ruler and I'm going to center this on the gusset over here and I'm going to measure a six inch opening. So just six inches on the flat part on the lining. And now, starting at one corner, we're going to sew at a half of an inch seam allowance all the way down until we get to one of these marks and we're going to backstitch there. Make sure you backstitch at the top as well. Skip over that opening. Don't sew here. Continue at the other mark, backstitch, and sew at a half of an inch seam allowance all the way up to the top corner where you're going to backstitch again. All right, so one's attached. I know it gets a little confusing. Make sure you don't get your zipper all twisted around over here, okay? Try to keep your zipper. I will tell you the last time this part I did twist my zipper around and I had to just take the zipper off in the end and fix it. So make sure right now your zipper is flat while you bring both your lining panels right sides together and line up the opposite end of the gusset right sides together with the remaining lining panel and clip together. So remember, just like the other sides, we do the midpoint first and then the top corners and then the straight bits and then the rounded bits. So make sure the zipper, this end of the zipper tape doesn't poke out. Make sure you keep that tucked inside as you're clipping everything in place. All right, we're gonna sew around the entire clipped edge at a half of an inch seam allowance. No leaving an opening on this one. You're gonna sew everything. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. Alrighty, now we can clip down some of the seam, but not all of it. So you can clip down the lining seam on the quilt cotton bottom part here, but don't clip it down on the top edge here where the cork is. And also don't clip the seam where the opening is on the lining. That needs to stay as is. So I'm just gonna cut the seam in half on the bottom quilt cotton edges, but not where that opening is. And I actually like to cut um, like a little bit farther away from the opening. So don't like cut straight into where the stitching starts. Do it a little bit further away. All right, now just like we did on the exterior, we're gonna add some double-sided tape to the top edges of our seam so that we can try to tape them open. I think I'm also going to stitch them down a little bit as well. So once you have the tape added, you can just remove the paper and just pull these seams open. And if you have some bulk here, you can actually cut into the seam perpendicular so that you don't have so much of it pulling on it. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take this to the sewing machine and I'm just going to stitch right along these corners here where I have my seams taped open at about a quarter inch seam allowance just to hold them in place. All right, now let's turn the lining right side out. This is gonna be so cute. I cannot wait to see this. Oh. It's gonna be even prettier than my tester. Alrighty, here we go. So this is the lining. And then here is your exterior. The exterior is supposed to be wrong side out, lining is right side out. Now remember, which side do you want to go on the back? So remember, for me, it's my zipper panel. My zipper panel needs to go against the back panel. So here's my front panel, here's my back panel, which means I'm gonna put it in just like this and then tuck in that zipper. There we go. So now we're gonna match up the midpoint marks on the top edges and clip those together on the front and the back. And then we're gonna go over to the gusset and we're going to match up all of the seams. Now, by basting down all of my seams so that they're open, this is so much easier. This is so much easier. I would say sewing this right here is the trickiest part of the entire pattern. I was, and in my opinion, it's the only tricky part of the pattern, and it's because of all those seams. But if you tape them and baste them down, it's nice and flat, and you shouldn't have to fight it at all at your machine, which is gonna be really nice. So just clip around the entire top edge. All right, now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine, and we're gonna sew along the top edge at a half of an inch seam allowance. You might find it easiest to sew it like this, so that the needle is going on the inside and you rotate it around like that. You might find this easier if you take the bed off your sewing machine and then wrap this around the arm of your sewing machine and sew it like this. Honestly, I find it easier to sew around the arm, so that's what I'm gonna do. 
whichever one, half of an inch seam allowance. Do a second row of stitching if you're using thicker material and make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end. Alrighty, I will tell you what, keeping those seams flat is really what makes sewing that so much easier. Uh, a couple places my seams folded in on themselves and those were the places where it was a little difficult to get the needle over. So yeah, flatten out those seams. So now we're gonna gently turn the bag right side out through the hole in the lining main panel, gently. All right, so make sure you use that hole in the lining to get your hand in there and poke out the corners of the bag on the exterior panel. Oh, this is looking so cute. All right, so now we're gonna tuck in the lining. And remember, this is not the top of the bag. The top of the bag is below the zipper panels. So fold this down, tuck in that lining. Make sure your zipper isn't all twisted around. Sometimes it happens, it's okay. There we go, okay. Get the zipper out of the way. And now we're gonna carefully go around this top edge here and flattening out that seam. Reach inside, use that hole to make sure that the seams on the sides here of the gusset are spread open and then fold down on that seam. I know, it gets bulky here. But once you have it the way you like it, put a clip on there so it doesn't move. How cute is this looking? And look at that tucked in little zipper. It's so cute. Okay, unzip this, tuck it in. Make sure you have the top edge as straight as possible. And now we're gonna go top stitch along this top edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Go slow, be careful. Be very careful over these seams over here. If you wanna bump up your needle to like a 9014 or a jeans needle, now's the time to do it. I know, this is just too cute, right? Oh my goodness. Okay, so now let's close up our lining opening. So remember we have an opening in this zipper pocket here. You're going to reach in through the zipper pocket opening to grab the bottom of your main lining panels and you're gonna pull it out through there. You know, it's kind of weird, but you're pulling out the bottom of the main lining panel and then you're going to just tug along that opening and line it up and clip together. And this is going to allow us to close this hole from the wrong sides of the lining panel instead of having to close it by like folding it under and then top stitching over it. So now we're just going to sew along this clipped open edge at a half of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, now tuck that lining that you just sewed back in there and then pull out just the pocket that has the opening and reach inside and poke out the corners so that you can take those corners and just kind of like tug this and pull the raw edges into the inside, just like that. And then clip along this folded opening here. And if you have like a woven tag or something and you wanna add that, this is a good place to do that. All right, now let's just top stitch along this opening at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and the end. I forgot to turn the camera on for that, I apologize. But you can see I just top stitch right over this edge here. And then we just push that back into the pocket and then zip up the pocket. So now the only thing we have left to do is to add the zipper end. Do you see how cute that is? Look at that nice tight little fit right there. I love this. It's like every single measurement on this is perfect. So now for the zipper end, we're just gonna use a metal zipper end, which is very easy to use. If you have the kit, then the screw is already inside. So you're gonna wanna take it out. So gently take it out and it's super tiny. So put it somewhere, you will not lose it. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna fold down the closed end of our zipper tape here. And you can give it a test fit real quick because you're just gonna insert this over that. And that's how it looks on the back. Just fold it over on the front. I mean, it's so easy, it's so easy. So before we do that, I'm gonna add some beacon three-in-one glue just to the tip 
of my zipper tape here and I have it all, I'm holding it folded back like that. And then I'm just going to put this on over it and the glue will just help make sure this doesn't ever come off. And I'm gonna flip it over. And before I put the screw in, I'm gonna grab a stiletto and I'm going to poke a hole, just kind of prepping it for, for the screw. I feel like it, it helps. Maybe it doesn't, but I feel like it does. And then I'm gonna grab my teeny tiny screw, carefully. And I'm going to just screw it into the hole right there, all the way in. And there we go, we have the zipper end in place. You can go ahead and just kind of push that into the bag. Unless you like it hanging out, then you can have it hanging out. So there's our body. And then we're gonna grab our strap. And if you wanna make yourself a strap with material, go ahead and do that. If you wanna make like a crossbody strap, go ahead and do that. You could even make like a one inch wide strap. You can still use one inch wide swivel hooks to connect to the half inch wide D-ring. So you have a lot of options here, but this, look how stinking cute this is. This bag is so pretty. I hope you love making it. All right, what did you think? What did you think? Like I said, the most time consuming part of this is going to be building that panel and you will have a good amount of scraps. I'll show you, I have a bunch of little scraps here, but you can use those scraps to make other items. For example, right now I am working on using those scraps to make a little Anna mini wallet. So you have a lot of options. Don't throw away the scraps from this panel because you're gonna wanna keep them. I wanted to show you guys my other version when I was testing this pattern out. So this is just more of a kind of a fall feel to it. And this has like a metallic cork. Everything again is, is from cork. It's just different colors, more of like a warm colorway. And this is again, more of like a garden party, kind of cool colorway. They're both stunning. Both of these have mistakes when I was piecing the panels together. On this bag right here, at one point I used the wrong seam allowance for some of the strips so they don't all line up perfectly. You can't even tell. On this one here, you can tell. I kind of screwed up over here. I didn't get my strips to line up correctly because I didn't prep them correctly, which is why we were aggressive about it in the video. But even so, it turned out absolutely stunning. So I, I really hope you love making this as much as I do. If you make this and you post it on social media, tag me. I want to see your version. I want to see what kind of stuff you're using. I think again, this would be so cool if every single one of these blocks was a different color. I mean, you know, the more color, the better. If you do tag me on social media, just look for Oakley Roots. I'm at Oakley Roots on Facebook, Instagram, Reels, TikTok, all the social media platforms. If you just want to send me an email with a photo of your version, you can reach me at jessica at oakleyroots.com. I would love to see this. I think this is perfect for the holidays, a perfect gift for any family member. And honestly, it's a perfect selfish sew. I don't know if I'm going to part with this one. I think this might be a bag that I actually use like every day. I'm very excited about it. I think it's just stunning. I hope you're having a great day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Have a great holiday season. Get out there and make something. Bye guys. Thank you so much for watching today's tutorial. I hope that you are inspired to go make something and have a lot of fun with these patterns. If you're not already subscribed, please make sure you click subscribe down below. Also make sure you hit that little bell, the little notification bell. That's gonna make sure you're notified every single time we have a new video or when we go live. For even more fun content from Oak Roots, make sure you're following us on Facebook and Instagram. We do daily stories over there, which include unboxing, talks about books, other little mini tutorials, lots and lots of discussion over all kinds of things going on. You can also find us on TikTok and also on Reels for even more fun, kind of more random content. And if you really wanna dive in for some behind the scenes content, free gifts, access to shop items before anybody else and influence on upcoming videos, make sure you go check out Oak Alerts over on Patreon. We have a lot going on over there and it's a fun place to hang out and you are directly supporting the Oak Alerts YouTube channel. These videos could not be possible without the help of my Patreon. So thank you so, so much to everybody over there. Thank you again for watching today's tutorial. I hope you enjoy the videos. Go make something.